This episode is brought to you by Pulsar. You're probably thinking that you are like demeaning the other person, mm-hmm. putting down the other person by criticizing, and you kind of think probably you have taken some sort of revenge from that person, and you have lift yourself up in, into a position of superiority or something. Mm. But that's not how it works. If you are a criticizing person, it's actually everything backfires upon yourself and you end up becoming a bitter person. You end up becoming a person who is confused. So if you are a kind of person who constantly criticizes, same thing. It just, everything just you know, backfires onto you and you, you just end up being a bitter person yourself. I agree with you. And uh, the person you're criticizing, you know, doesn't make any difference to to him or her or whatever, or the situation. And then comparing. Comparing is only done by a very, very weak person who have no confidence in themselves, in their style, in their ways, because they're always trying to compare themselves with other and try to, you know, uh, make that, bar according to what others are doing mm-hmm. you know your 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 you know your your, your the, you know bar is that uh, i have to be some someone who is more successful than you are which you mm-hmm. think or someone who is wealthier than you are mm-hmm. or someone who is more stylish than you are and then you keep on comparing and you want to live up to it and if you can't then what happens again? If you think you're not comparable to the person you're comparing, then what happens? You start criticizing the other person, yeah. thinking that if I put that person down, I'll lift myself up automatically. But that's not how it works, you know? Never. So uh, comparing is also very, very evil. I think it does, doesn't work. Uh, um, and after all, Sanjay, you are an individual, I'm an individual. You yeah. are a unique person, I'm a unique person, you know. Yeah. The way I am should not be the uh, the bar for you and the way you are should not be the bar for me because you bring a different thing to the table, mm-hmm. I bring a different to, thing to the table. And whatever we bring to the table should contribute to the society in its own unique way. True that. So you gotta be confident of yourself. If you're a confident person, if you are, if you consider yourself unique, then you won't be comparing yourself to any uh, uh, any other pe- uh, person, yeah. because you're so confident that you know that your style is your style, the way you are is what represents you and your image, and basically you just feel proud of that, right? Always, twenty four seven. Here the thing is, when people, when people, like you said, you know, I, I, I always think about when, when people talk about, when we are talking about weak people, I always think of this movie. I'm a big fan of Star Wars, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, and then I always think of the dark side, always. There's always a dark side and there's always a side which is good side, you know. And the dark side sometimes take, takes over people. It, it consumes people. It eats people, and you never know. You never know when that happens. You know, especially when there, are, when we go through trying times, like right now, for example. These are trying times in the world. People, people don't have a lot of support. A lot of people don't have a lot of support. Not just in our country, all around the world. Mm-hmm. Like, cut to? Of course. Okay, you said trying times. Mm-hmm. There's no such thing as. Uh, uh, trying times, mm-hmm. or this is the trying mm-hmm. times, the others are not the trying times. My experience tells me is uh, the life itself is, 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 the whole life is a trying phase. It's a trying time. Hmm. So, if you take it like that, yeah. then everything is something that you want to overcome. Everything that you that comes along your life is something that you want to challenge and be challenged and to overcome. So mm. you're always prepared. Because life itself, the whole life is a trying time. It's just not this phase. There's mm. no such thing as not trying time in life. When you're born, 
your t that's your trying time as well. When you're, you know, right after you're born, you you are desperately, or your parents are desperately, just want to make sure that you are that you keep yourself alive, that you're breathing, that you're this or you're that, yeah. that you're healthy, you know. So in every phase, there's a trying time, hmm. uh, and life is a trying time. So if you if you have that in your head, because a lot of us have this illusion that life should be a bed of roses, should be comfortable. You know, should be, I don't know, sitting around in coffee shop and just having some, <laughs> not coffee, but good coffee. <laughs> <laughs> true, 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 true. But life is not that. Those are just a sporadic moments in life, you know. Mm -hmm. Those are just the punctuations in your trying life. That's not life itself. The party doesn't last forever. The party ha comes with an expiry date, you know. There's a beginning of the party and the end of the party. And then you again enter your trying phase of your life. So these are just uh, what I call the, the cushions mm -hmm. that is thrown into you every now and then in your trying life. <laughs> <and> your trying <laughs> the whole life is trying, you know. Yeah. As you're young, you, 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 you want to keep yourself alive. And then you want to sort of like, you know, make yourself capable through your education, through your training, whatever, yeah. you know. And then you probably want to go out in life and earn something, make something out of yourself, you know. And these are all trying. And then if you manage to do that, if you manage to scale certain height or certain success, then your trying phase is wanting to maintain that, you know, keep up that or get to the other level. So the task is never finished. It's never done. And then after that, if you're retired, then you have another phase of life. Hmm. And that comes with whole new set of challenges by itself. And then you have your old ages, and old ages again. If you just manage to take a 15 minutes walk around the park, that's an achievement. Mm -hmm. And that's your trying time, just to make sure that you can walk 15 minutes every day when you're 92 years old, you know? So whole life, right from the birth canal to the scorching cremation <laughs> or the gaping uh -huh. burial, it's a trying phase, you know? It's always a trying phase. But we can't really live our life by thinking that, oh, it's such a trying and challenging and all horrible life all the time. We've got to be positive. We've got to say, okay, it doesn't matter. And, and mind you, these are not the trying, really trying, trying times of the humanity. Think about the, how, what, what, what kind of trying times, really, really trying times the humanity have gone through, you know, just think of the, the ancestors mm -hmm. right from hundreds and hundreds of years ago, you know. In the, the beginning, the, mm -hmm. it was, you know, it was just to get a food was a big struggle. Of course. And then the humanity went through so many wars and famine and, and so many phases. Compared to all that, we are, this is not a trying time. This is a piece of cake, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, we just got to protect our, ourselves, wear a mask and things like that. Yes, it can be very difficult for people who are like surviving on a day-to-day -day basis when they, you know, when, you know, a situation like this comes up and mm -hmm. everything closes up and they can't make their earning. There's a problem there, yes. Yeah. That has to be taken care of. But otherwise, the humanity has gone through so many extreme challenges, you know. Just think about how many wars they have mm -hmm. fought in for so many... You know, people have, millions of people have died in, 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 in the First World War, Second World War, or the, the Crusade, or the, when the Roman Empire was expiring and expanding, when Genghis Khan was conquering the world, yeah, yeah, Alexander yeah. was going over <laughs> all around the world and conquering when the Muslim came into India. Yeah. You know, so those are the, you know, so <sighs> compared to that, this is okay. COVID-19 is still okay? COVID-19, well, it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. But it's something that we should be able to cope up with because in the back of our head, we should always uh, have that life is not bed of roses. Life is going to throw challenges at us. Yeah. And the whole idea of living your life is to prepare yourself, mm -hmm. to ready yourself, to face the challenges, for face the unseen, uncertain challenges in the course of life that you're going to encounter. You know? True that. True that. There are a few stages in life as well, you know. No, you, they're ta well, again, the stages of life when you're born, you're trying to figure out, you know, you're going oh. through school. That is that is one stage. I believe that's one stage that I've crossed over, which was definitely challenging. Yeah. 
trying to figure out, like you said, navigating through the hallways of the uh, school was a very big challenge as well when, when I was young and weak and not one of the super athletic ones, trying to figure that out. And uh, gradually you cross that phase and then you go out in the outer Now world. again, when, yeah. you say, when you say not super athletic, mm -hmm. being super athletic yeah. is, is, is not a bar by itself. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, some mm -hmm. people can be super athletic. Yeah. You probably have your forte in, in some other department. Yeah, true, true, you just got to find that out. Yeah. I mean, this is what I meant. You know, mm -hmm. this is this is what I meant by don't compare, don't even compare unconsciously mm -hmm. or subconsciously. You know, just leave it. Let it be. Just leave it. Yeah, because you see, first of all, none of us, nobody. I mean, no matter like you know, when we talk about social situation or political situation we're mm -hmm. all, all always talking about giving equal rights to everyone making everyone equal you know like you know, all humans are equal we, we all should be equal men and women should be equal we're talking about equality equality and then and, and yeah. such social situation and political but come on we're not born equal Hmm. Whoever has made us, whether you call it God, your parents, or nature, whatever you believe in, whoever has created us, has mm -hmm. created us very, very unequally. Hmm. You know, they've, we've been cre some of us have been created very strong. Some of us have been created with a lot of, you know, sports, sportive uh, talent. Some of us have been created by a lot of, uh, I don't know, creative talent. Yeah. Some of us are good in science, the others are good in literature, some of us are good in political things, the other are good in just sitting and basically just watching the moon and ruminating and, and running their imagination wild. Sure. So we got to understand that, you know, we are created so unequally. Mm -hmm. You know, just siblings born out of the same parents are, 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 are born Completely different. Uh, completely different. You know, they can be physically different. They can be mentally different. They can have different taste. So nobody sets the bar. Everybody has to find their own path. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So, but what do we intend to do? Right from there, we intend to compare. And our parents also don't, uh, you know, sort of like in encourage that attitude by saying, oh, look at your brother. He's doing this and you're not doing this. And... And this and that is something, the standard that, you know, wisely and unwisely the society has created or the system has created. But what we got to understand is that standard by itself is not the standard that you should uh, evaluate people. True. You know? Yeah. No, no, I completely like, agree with you. On this. Like, for example, mm -hmm. when I wanted to get in art, in, in, in the artistic field, mm -hmm. Uh, my parents says, "Why you are want, want, why you want to uh, pursue uh, you know a career in films or in an in, in artistic field? I mean, uh, you should be like your cousin or like your sibling who is into medicine or who is into engineering or yeah. who is into I don't know law or politics." And if I had sort of wasted time and my energy by saying, why am I not having interest like my cousin or this? Why is my interest so different, you know? Or why am I want to pursue something, at least in Nepal, which has not been sort of, you know, uh, has not been proven successful or does not, does not really have a field which a young person can pursue a career in long term? Why am I having interest in such, such field, yeah. you know? Uh, if I had uh, thought in those terms and not have and did not rely on my own self confidence, my own passion, and my own interest, I probably would have been neither here nor there. You know, I would have said, "Okay, my parents want to be make you know they want me to be an engineer." Okay, I would probably go and pursue engineering, mm -hmm. but I probably would not be number one engineer because that's not where my passion lies. Sure. And that's because someone has told me that this is the standard that you should follow, you know, comparing again. So, but if you are like, if, if, if you're confident in, in the interest that you have, and then you have this tremendous passion that you want to do, I think young people also should follow that, you know, even if there is no precedent in front of you, mm -hmm. or there's no example set by anyone, and, 
ultimately you probably have to prove yourself and be an example yourself if, yeah. you, if, you, if, you, if you take it to a successful point. Uh, so, you know, it's this is what happens in the society. In every step, there's this, you know, consciously or subconsciously, there's always comparing, you know, comparing this with that. And people grow up by saying that, oh, why am I not the athletic mm -hmm. kind? Or why am I not the creative kind? Or why am I don't have this body size? Or why I don't have this kind of nose or this kind of uh, eyes? Or, you know, like, and especially with the social networking oh. these days, you think, you know, like, uh, am I not as pretty or am I not as good as the <laughs> other one just because someone is, says this one is the one which is pretty? Mm -hmm. and the, so this is all confusing. So my take is like that, you know, which is, which is not easy to live by. Hmm. It is not easy to live by, you know. Uh, but luckily, I've been able to follow this philosophy. But it's not easy. It's not as easy as I'm saying it now when mm -hmm. it comes to practical life, you know, when you have peer pressures, when you have parents' pressure, when you have societal pressure, because after all, people have to live in a society. True. And society dictates in a certain way, you know, and which can be against the current of your own thinking and on this. And so one feels pressurized, you know. Always. Always, right? All because your parents have expectations, societies have expectations. And what are expectations? Expectations is just something that... Uh, Society has brainwashed other people by saying that this is how it should be. You know, mm. this is if you do this, then only you are a successful, good person. If you behave in this way, or if you wear these sort of clothes, then only you are the in person. You know, if you don't wear this in a, this manner, you're, you know, outcast. You're, you're outcast. You're, outcast. you're this. Yeah. You know, but what's a fashion? Fashion is something that you want to probably create yourself according to your own taste, your body, your comfort, the way you feel good, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why do you want to be dictated by some commercial entity or some commercial you know, advertising that tells you to do this? And just because you're perfectly happy with this shirt and someone comes and tells you, oh, this was just, this was six months ago fashion. Now you got to wear a different kind of shirt. Mm -hmm. And then even though you're feeling so comfortable and nice and you really love this shirt, you said, eh, maybe I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and then you go ahead and you yeah. have to buy the other one. So this, this has to, um, you know, uh, people have to live by their own standard, create their own standard, create their own bar, you know. Always. Go by your taste. Don't listen to too many noise from the outside. Listen to your inner voice, your inner noise, you know. Awesome. Now with the technology, you know, like we, what we are doing with the technology, we're just bombarding ourselves with information from outside. We're listening to too many people. We're listening. We're not even listening to one truth. We're listening to several truths, too many truths, you know. And you don't know if some are true or some are fake. And you don't know which one is the real yeah. truth, you know. <laughs> yeah, you never know. Because there are so many truths. And every, and every version, every opinion or every so-called truth has their own fan following, mm -hmm. you know, have their own backings. So it can be quite confusing. I mean, um, for young people growing up with, with this kind of technology and this kind of um, information age. So my, my take is, uh, you know, especially when you're young, you know, you, you, you listen to your own voice as well and, you know, understand your own taste, your own passion. No doubt. On your, 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 yourself. And go and abide by that. You know, try to make yourself happy without... Uh, trying to live up to other people's expectations mm -hmm. and other people's this. Yes, of course. I mean, you have to make a living. Yes, um, money is important, you know, mm -hmm. because money buys food and you can't live without food. Money and, buys the same shirt that you want after six uh, months. <laughs> yeah, money buys the shirt. Money buys everything, you know. I mean, you can't go without shirt. You can't go without food. You can't go. All that is very, very important. But then again, just... Um, also realize that each one of us are, are, are very unique by ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. and our standard can be truly our own standard, and we can sort of live by it. Um, uh, we should be proud of our own taste, own style. I mean, if you feel that, okay, passionately, right, innately, you feel that, okay, I like to follow the fashion, then please go ahead and follow it. If it that is 
What do you want? If you have not yeah. been, uh, yeah, if that's what you want, you know, if you haven't been brainwashed to do that or, mis you know, pressurized to do that, by all means do it. I'm not against that. But make sure that you are making your own decision in life, you know, and the decision is coming purely organically from you. <laughs> True, 100%. <laughs> from I agree with you. If If I hadn't... You know, I was coming to the point. Uh, when you're young, you, do, you really don't know. You, you want to follow your passion, but you're bombarded by society. Right. You're bombarded by your parents. You're bombarded by everything that this is what you got to do. Like you said, you'd have been like your cousins. You know, you'd have yeah. chosen that path. Yeah. Even I would have chosen a different path. But I wanted to stick with, all right, what do I want to do for the rest of my life? I want to talk for the rest of my life. I want to have a connection with people for the rest of my life. And here I am. And that was what I enjoyed. Till today, right? I've known you for a long time. Till today. I've never felt, I'm 33 years old, I've never felt that I've worked a single day You're of my 33? life. You're yeah. 33? That ancient? <laughs> that old? <laughs> we have a tremendous generation <laughs> gap, man. <laughs> we definitely I don't. I just celebrated my 23rd, I think. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. So I've never worked a single day of my life. Have you have you worked a single day of your life? Have you felt mm, that way? No. If your if your passion and your hobby can be your profession, then you don't work. You know. You never do. You don't work. You just float. You glide. <laughs> 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 you party. No, th that's exactly what I meant. You know, like I mean, it's it's probably a little less than what it used to be mm -hmm. in our society earlier. But nevertheless, I mean, it's I mean, it's not just our society. It's actually the whole world is like that. You know. People do throw all kind of like the child is born and and the, and it's bombarded with so many expectations <sighs> externally, you know, coming in from your parents, from the society, from the information you're gathering, yeah, from yeah, people around the yeah, world. Yeah. So a person can grow very confused in, in times like this, you know, because you cannot innately uh, uh, pinpoint your own um, own expectations and our own interest because uh, every, uh, all the expectations are coming from externally mm -hmm. you know outwardly your parents have certain expectations the society has certain expectations maybe your teachers have a different expectations of you and inwardly maybe you have passion for something else and because the expectation is so contrary to your own passion you are not able to verbalize it or discuss it or you know grow it because passion needs growing it needs flourishing you know and and in order to do that you got to be sharing it expressing it you know experimenting it uh, and 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 then you have and, and you are even more in a, in a in a challenging situation if your passion somehow happens to be something very different, mm -hmm. something that has not been so done before, done, yeah. tested before, or hasn't been so successful in your society or mm -hmm. in the country that you're living in. And people uh, don't imagine that as something that people, person would be doing it for, 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 for living or for life. But what really pays, I mean, I mean, this is probably, you can probably say, with your experience and, uh, and I could probably you know this is what I can say from my experience too because we sort of like been a bit of a maverick in terms of picking up our uh, our, our profession at least of course. right uh, something that was not tested never uh, but w how did we go ahead with this the only tool I mean we you as well I mean on the only tool we had in our toolbox was uh, the passion and that and, the, and, and that certain amount of confidence that if I get the opportunity and the chance to do what I really want to do, I can excel. I, I can prove myself. I can do it. That sort of confidence is, is necessary, actually. That's an extremely mm -hmm. powerful tool to have uh, to follow your passion. Because you may have the passion, but you also need to be confident that provided I am given an opportunity, I have this confidence that I can prove myself. I can excel. Like I had passion for acting, mm -hmm. but I was not getting any acting work because uh, there were hardly any films being made. But inwardly, I had this confidence that if someone offers me an acting <laughs> job yeah. or a film, I can deliver. I have that confidence. 
I'm prepared. That's, that's the kind of tool you need to have in your toolbox in order to you know, go into something that has yeah. been untested. Because, you see, if you, if you walk a path that no one has walked before, two things can happen. The good thing is that you will ultimately reach a place that no one has reached. Because you'll be an example. You'll create an example yourself. You'll be the trendsetter. You'll be the trendsetter. You'll mm. be the example. Because that was the path that was untreaded. You know, nobody walked that path. You walked that path and you reached the destination. And thereafter, the path was formed and the people will follow you. Yeah. That's the good side. Mm. And the bad side is uh, you might get lost. <laughs> you might get lost, you know. You can be confident, but you cannot be overconfident. There is always this uncertainty in life. There's always this unexpected thing that can happen, you know. Mm. Always that things may not turn the way you think it will turn, you know, when it comes to practically doing it. So you've got to be aware of that as well, that, you know, if I succeed, if I move on, I'll get to a destination where no one has reached, but with the uncertainty, you know, of life, of, of the challenges and, you know, of things not working the way you really think it will work and once you get into the field, you might also get lost. And if you get lost, um, then you should always have plan B up your sleeves. You've know? mm. you got to know that, okay, this is not working. Uh, I'm, getting, I, uh, I'm getting lost in my journey. I'm getting lost in my path. It's a good time to make a U-turn. It's a good time to make a U-turn and take another path in life, mm -hmm. you know? Because life itself has to move on. You cannot give up on life. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, worst come worst, you can give up on your passion if yeah. it doesn't work. But never do a mistake of if your passion doesn't work uh, and if something that you really put your heart and your soul into it and if, if that, uh, you know, it, it turns into a fiasco, it mm -hmm. doesn't, you know, then always be smart enough to know that life has to go on. Yeah. And life has, cannot be ruined because of this. I cannot be succumbing to frustration or depressions or uh, counting myself as a failure or you know, feeling ashamed of your attempt and saying, oh, I have not been able to do what I'm doing. What will people think? What will this thing? No. So what if you have fallen? Mm -hmm. Get up. Take a walk in another di direction. Because life has, life ultimately has to be lived. So besides the passion uh, that you have for your work or the pr profession, uh, above that you should have passion for life itself. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I, I on on this take, what you just said. I've met a lot of people in my life who have lost their way sometimes. A couple of days back, right here, right here where you're sitting, I had somebody come in, and I was sitting with the person, and we t talked for almost two and a half hours. Right at the end, I told him a very simple thing. Right at the end, I told him, if you ever. If the negativity takes over, ever in your life, ever in your life, it doesn't matter when it is, it doesn't matter what moment it is, my home and my studio is open for you 24-7. Yeah. Come in. My home, I'll, I'll cook you a dal bhat. Right. And at studio, I'll make sure that I make some food for you. And come here any day, and I'll be here for you. Because when I wake up in the morning, I'm looking forward for that day. But there are a lot of people in this world. When they yeah. wake up in the morning, they're not looking forward for this day. They True. just do not want to get out of that bed. You know? Yeah. And for me personally, what I think is, sometimes my job is also to go ahead and tell somebody who doesn't want to get up, get out of that bed that day. It's okay. Yeah. Get out of the bed. Make your bed. That's the first thing that you got to do so that you've accomplished something. That's exactly true, because if you mm -hmm. succumb to your mood, you know, then you have uh, put yourself in a, even a worse situation. Because not getting out of bed will not improve your situation. Mm -hmm. uh, not getting out of bed uh, lands you up in what? Like, you are, your situation is intact. It hasn't vanished. 
And then you have this horrible condition of just wanting to lay down in bed and, and, and ruminate and, 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 you know, like, uh, feel sad about it and, yeah. and get depressed. So don't let, you, you know, one should not let one's mood dictate oneself, mm -hmm. you know, because, so you see, what happens is mood is something that is inevitable in us. You know, none of us are superhumans or superman or super being that human mood does not affect us. It affects you, it affects me, it affects the saints, the people who give great discourse and talks and, you know, people who are uplifting people, mm -hmm. you know, people who are writing about spiritual uplifting and mood affects us in equal numbers. You know, we are getting this equal share of the mood pie. Yeah. It's only what we do with our mood, how do we react to our mood, is different in every individual. So, if you are in, in a certain kind of mood, don't think that you are the only one who's in that mood. And you are, and you are getting that mood because it's inevitable. You are a human being, therefore you are getting that mood. Mm -hmm. You fall, it will hurt. You know, I said you fall and if you are fall, if you, if you have fallen, I, I'm saying get up and move, but if when you fall, it can hurt. You True. know, it will hurt. It'll hurt everyone. Yeah. But do you want to just stay fallen and brood about your hurt and complain and make a big deal? Because by doing all that, still your hurt is not going to get over. You're just in a worse situation. If you had gathered up the tenacity and the energy in spite of your hurt, if you have you know, risen up and, and, and walked, you will probably put yourself in a different space. But you fail to show that energy mm -hmm. in the face of adversity or in the face of challenges of life. You have failed to uh, utilize that spare energy that you have within yourself as a human being as well. Instead of that, what you have chosen? You have chosen to succumb to the weaker part of the human being, of just sitting there and brooding and looking at your pain and looking at your hurt, and that's not going to recover it anyway. Never. So, Never. so don't, don't, um, you know, feel bad that you got that mood because that mood, those kind of mood comes with being a human. Hmm. The only way you can make yourself exceptional is the way you handle that mood, the way you channelize that mood, you know? Like, you and I could be sad on the same level. Mm -hmm. The sadness could hit us equally, like you and I, but each one of us may ch channelize that sadness differently. The same sadness can put me in a very depressive mood and say, oh, I'm so sad, you know, maybe I want to go to a bar and drink and forget my... <laughs> all my problems. Problems and all this, you know, I want to sort of like um, bury down all my problems. You're not, so, you're not really solving them. You're just... <laughs> suppressing them. Suppressing <laughs> them, burying them, you know, with alcohol. And once the alcohol goes away, then <laughs> you have your al alcohol side effects and with the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is still there, plus the hangover. <laughs> exactly. So that's how you challenge, you know. Another philosophy, you know, like we're talking about moods, I'll tell you this. Uh, I... Uh, <clears throat> In life, you know, I, I never wanted to connect my uh, mood and my situation with something else. Uh, what I mean by this is that, like, in you know, a lot of people, we intend to say, oh, I'm so happy today, let's go celebrate, and let's go and have a drink. <laughs> yeah. So what happens? You're connecting your happiness with gathering friends and having a drink, right? Yeah. And then you say, oh, I'm so sad today, man. I don't want to do anything. Let's hit the bar and let me get drunk. So you know, you're associating your sadness again with something else. Mm -hmm. Or you might even say, oh, I'm feeling so sad, I can't deal with this, you know, let me go out for a holiday or for this. So 
you get this, you, you, you know, escapism mentality. What I always maintained, and the way I deal with my mood, initially, knowingly or unknowingly, but as I grew up, I was thankful that I was able to distinguish it, it, it in that manner, mm -hmm. knowingly or unknowingly. But as I grew older, I you know that's the best thing that I did, and that's how I want to live for the rest of my life as well, is not to connect your mood with anything else, but to just to deal with your mood rawly as it is, you know? It's okay to celebrate if you're happy, but mm -hmm. just enjoy your happiness on its own. Deal with your sadness on its own. You know, don't take uh, the support of alcohol or, or a substance or substance or even for that matter you know like s just listening to uh, sad music or things like that just deal with it and if you're feeling depressed don't connect that with laying in bed all day mm -hmm. or not talking to your friends i'm feeling so sad i don't want to be you know, as, as a human being, we've got to realize that all that is in our mechanism. You know, we can't help it. That's something to do with our cells and hormones and our genes. It's nothing to do with us, actually. You know? Uh, because we have... Everything is to do with our hormones. Mm -hmm. And by reacting it in a different way, we jeopardize those hormones even more. You know? You're... Mm -hmm. You're angry because of your hormone. You are excited because of your hormone. You have this l overwhelming love for someone because of the hormone. It's everything is, the hormone is behind you. You're feeling very excited and exhilarated. It's the hormone in you that is doing that things, you know? And, and, and we all have that hormones, you know? Like if you're feeling very, mm -hmm. even if you're feeling very sexual, yeah, and your your sexual energy is way up there. Yeah. You don't need to feel guilty about it. Just your testosterone is kicking in. You know, like yeah. you got this. But what you got to understand and know is how am I going to channelize this sexual energy? Am I going to channelize mm -hmm. in a positive way or a negative <laughs> way? You know, like I don't think there's uh, a negative uh, way to channelize it. <laughs> well, uh, it can be. It can be harmful ways as well. You know, yeah. if you are if 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 you are just driven by your sexual desires, there are a lot of harms that okay. a person can do. But having a sexual desire by itself, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just you have healthy hormones, mm -hmm. but deal with it wisely. You know. Dealing with it wisely is something that would differentiate your you as a person, you know. Because otherwise, if you are just you can't, you see, the hormones are going to be there in you, but you cannot always be led by your hormones. You got just to understand hmm. that it is there. We have a brain and we have a heart too. Sometimes the heart takes over. Do you believe in that? Sometimes the heart just takes over, and that's one of the reasons why people say. You fall in love. You fall literally in love. No. What's your take on this? My take is that we are more function with, I mean, heart meaning uh, emotion. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's where I'm getting it. Yeah. Uh, we as a human being are more affected by emotions than by intellect. Mm -hmm. uh, something that we accept in intelligently, you know, uh, by our intellect, uh, we can take it or leave it any time. Like, for example, if someone tells you, you know, mm, if someone tells you, let's just take a mundane example, you know, if someone tells you, like, uh, the earth is flat, it, it hasn't been proven, you yeah. know. Uh, this, this great guy in, I don't know, Italy or Greek, and he said the earth is flat, and he did a lot of research, and then you say, okay, such a learned, wise guy is saying mm -hmm. the earth is uh, flat, so I'll take that. And yeah. they, you'll go and tell your children and tell your people that, you know, our earth is really flat. It's, mm. uh, this is how it is. Mm -hmm. And I've got this information from a very wise guy. Yeah. And over the years, what happens? 50 years, 100 years down the line, another ex much wiser, you know, uh, more researched guy comes out and says, no, the earth is not flat. It's been proven wrong. Mm -hmm. Earth is actually oval. It's round. And our ancestors, they got it all wrong. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? You are readily 
and willingly you'll accept that. You'll say, okay, there was this guy who said Earth is flat. Now he's been proven wrong. And there's a wiser guy who come, has come up and he's done more research and everything and he's more, more scientific in his approach and he says the world is oval. Then you will just replace the Earth is flat from your head with the Earth is oval, right? It'll take some time. Uh, I don't think so. You don't no. think so? No. You don't think it's going to take a century for people to start believing that uh, uh, the Earth is uh, round? N- n- no, I mean, I mean, it took a long time mm-hmm. for another person to come up and, and, and say it. But yeah. metaphorically, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. For, yeah. for, yeah. for, what I'm trying to tell you is that, uh, let's just say this guy said Earth is flat, and then another guy comes and he says, yeah. I've done a better people research. It, yeah. and people will believe yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. They are, they, they'll willingly replace it, or any formula, you know, like they say, this is this, and this is not this, you know, this is how it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Or we're talking about COVID, you know, initially someone said, okay, oh, COVID is something, it's nothing, it'll go away, like Donald Trump said, it's just mm-hmm. a flu, it comes, it goes, you know, he said, that's what he said. Yeah. A lot of people believed him. Yeah. But yeah. then someone else came and say, no, this is not something that goes and goes, you've got to protect yourself, yeah, you've yeah. got to do this, you got to do that and people accepted people, that. Of course, they said you don't have to wear a mask in the yeah. beginning and so then now you've got to wear a mask. These yeah. are all to do with your intellect. Mm-hmm. So s- anything to do with your intellect, you are willing to accept it and once things have been proven wrong and uh, you're willing to discard that and, and, and replace it with something mm-hmm. that is more substantial as well. But something that you do emotionally, oh. no matter what people tell you, like, and the things that we take emotionally is our family, Mm -hmm. our beliefs, our faith, you know, uh, and our uh, love affairs and our relationship. Mm -hmm. So what happens? If you take something emotionally, like I take my, for example, let's just say I take my religion very emotionally, Mm -hmm. you know? Let's just say for a you minute. You do? I'm, I'm getting into no, that. <laughs> we'll just, get into that. We'll, we'll get right. into that. You know, that's <laughs> okay. a different thing. Yeah. Let's just say I take my religion very, very seriously. You know, yeah. I said, okay, Sankar is my God. <laughs> you know, I believe in him. You know, he's the one I go to whenever I am in problem. I pray to him. You know, I do pujas on Sankar Day and all this. But some very... You know, empirical guy comes in, a scientist guy comes in. But where is Sankar? Where is he? Is he in Kailas? We have a lot of people who have gone to Kailas. You know, they looked for him. They didn't find him. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you, have you seen anyone that has, who has met Sankar? Uh, do you really have a proof that he exists? Then, of course, I would say, no, I don't have, I don't have proof. What do I have? I just have faith. I have belief that is around. So no matter how people try to prove me wrong, the fact that I have this faith and this belief, I cannot discard it. Despite my intellect telling me that he's actually right. I mean, nobody has seen Sankar. People have gone to Kailash and, and, and you know, the, Sankar is nowhere there. Uh, even my, my intellect might say that, but mm-hmm. that, something that I have already accepted emotionally, even my intellect will not be able to discard that because it's so deep-rooted in my emotion. It's just like if you fall in love with a girl. And if I come and tell you, Sanjay, how can you fall in love with a girl like that, man? Come on. She's too ugly for you. Mm -hmm. She's too old for you. You have a better chances of getting much prettier girl and this and that, you know? I can give you all kind of logic. It's only you who knows that whether you can leave her or not. And all that depends on how emotionally your affair has been rooted in your heart. And if it is taking a place in your heart, no ma- amount of rationalization and explanation is going to work on you. It's just going to go through your one ear and come out through the other. You know? Yeah. Or if I tell you, Sanjay, you. you what are you doing by bringing up this your, your child? I mean, he's, he's just going to be a, a vagabond when he grows up. And look mm-hmm. at him. He's so ugly. He's not going to study well. And when in your old age, he's just going to give you a lot of problem. So why don't you just put him in an orphanage and, and, and you know, get rid of him? Never. Can you do that? No. Can you call your child ugly? 
no matter how many people around you, even if they tell you he or she is ugly, he or she would be the prettiest face that you've seen in the service because they're, they have all embedded in your emotion. And something that is embedded in your emotion, even your intellect will fail. Your own rationalization might, will fail. And that's one of the reasons why even the greatest scientists are religious, or even the great doctors, you know, are religious. Uh, because it has been embedded in their emotions so deeply, mm -hmm. even their rationalization and their awareness is not working on themselves. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely. I completely, you I understand? completely, I completely so, know what you're talking about. So emotion really uh, is, act, as a human being, I think we're more emotional than, uh, than um, intellectual. How about you, though? I, I, how emotional do you think you are at uh, this point? I'm a very uh, aware person. Yeah. Uh, because um, emotion... You got to be careful how uh, emotional you get. You got to be careful in front of people because of what you do. No, or no, no. emotional of with <laughs> things or stuff like you know, and like in Buddhism they say that you know you got to be. What I mean by you got to be careful with uh, how much emotional you get is that how much, let's just say how much attached you get with uh, things and stuff. You know, emotion is also like being attached. To it, and in Buddhism they always talk about being detached. You know, so sometimes mm. if you are blindly getting too emotional about things, uh, that can hurt you in the long run. For me personally, I say I never think. At the end of the day, I don't know how long I'm going to live. Nobody knows. That is, nobody's ever yeah. going to find out yeah. how long they're going to yeah. live. At the end of the day, on my deathbed, I don't know how it's going to go. But one thing I'll remember: I'll never care about. What kind of fancy things I had in my life. I'll never care about if I had a private jet or not, or if I had a million dollars or a billion dollars on my bank account. I'll only care about what kind of relationships I'd had. Oh. Was I a good person to the people I loved, to the people I cared about? Did I do good by the uh, people who I'm leaving? That's what I'm going to remember at the end of the day. Well, you know, when it comes to emotion, mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm kind of a person who is like, I feel the emotions, but I don't carry my emotion on my sleeves on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. So um, I may not be very, very expressive about my emotions uh, in a very, you know, open or blatant way, but that doesn't mean that I don't feel it. Uh, I just want to be a little practical because, you know, mm, life throws you with all kinds of situations. Uh, you, you just cannot carry your emotions on your sleeves all the time. You can be compassionate, you can empathize with other people's situation because um, as, as an individual, uh, if you carry emotions on your sleeves, uh, there's only so much you can do. Uh, only so many people you can uh, link up with or make mm. them happy or make them comfortable. Uh, but there's a huge, huge crowd out there, you know. Yeah. There's a sea of humanity out there. And there's no way you can be connected. And um, uh, even if you feel emotionally, you've got to sort of like put that in the back burner. For example, I'm an actor in this country. Yeah, a lot of people know me. I mean, I have a lot of people who also, like, come to my gate for all kinds of help. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, if I can, if I was in the position, my nature tells me that uh, I should be helping each one of them, every one of them, you know? And uh, my desire and my wish would be that as well. Mm -hmm. But I cannot do that practically. And that's what I meant by not carrying your emotions on your sleeve. Their story might be pathetic. Their situation might be pathetic. But I might be helpless as well. Mm -hmm. 
because there's the practical side of life as well, you know, um, which is that we're not in the position to help everyone or connect with everyone or even if we have a sense of empathy and, and compassion in our nature, be compassionate and show empathy to all that we come across in life. All the needy ones, all the desperate ones, you know. Uh, as an individual, it would be so difficult to uplift everyone who comes along your way who's desperate or depressed or or in need of basic things in mm. life, you know. Mm, it's difficult to do that in that uh, space. And the other thing is, like even if it, when, when it comes to love, you also got to understand that even, even in your affairs, my experience tells me, you know, I could be wrong, you could probably have a different opinion, when it comes to a relationship or love, even there, I think uh, one cannot exactly carry your emotions on the sleeves all the time because you're dealing with another person. Hmm. And the other person may come up with a different set of values, a different set of outlooks, different degree of emotions, you know, different kind of nature. You might feel emotion, emotional, you know, Mm. might have rooted the other person in your heart deeply. And in course of time, what if the other person changes his or her mind? Mm. And you got to let that go because it's not your decision. It's a decision of another person. And just be and because you have succumbed so much into that relation, you cannot show your desperation by saying, oh, how will I live without you? You can't do this, you can't do that. So that's what I meant by not carrying your emotions on your sleeves all the time because, I mean, we mm -hmm. cannot deal with our own ups and downs as an individual, you know. What we are thinking now may be different from what we are thinking tomorrow. Yeah. So how can we deal with the other person's emotions? And when you're into a relationship, you're dealing with a completely another set of person who comes up with its own mechanism, <laughs> own <laughs> chemistry, <laughs> own ways, you know? Yeah. It's so difficult to understand oneself, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, no, no. Like, you know, if you look back, uh, Sanjay of five years ago or ten years ago might be different of, of Sanjay now, you know, mm. or Sanjay of today might be different of Sanjay of twenty years from now. Mm. So we ourselves are so, you know, constantly shifting and changing. Uh, so that's what happened, and that and, and that's what I meant, you know. Like I'm 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 emotional, but mm. I'm also practical, mm -hmm. and and I also understand that. Uh, just because I felt a uh, certain way that the other party does not need to feel the certain Look way. Look at that. That is Rajesh from 10 years ago and Sanjay from 10 years ago together. <laughs> <laughs> now look at that. Oh, yes. That's 2010. Yes. That 2000, uh, sorry, that's 2011 and we are at 2021 now. Right. Yeah. And that's you 10 I years know. ago and that's me 10 years ago. Yeah. I can tell that this must, that must have been winter time. Yeah, this is winter time. <laughs> the, thing, the thing about what we are talking about is there are layers. Everybody has layers. It doesn't matter who you are, what profession you're in. Every human being has layers. It just depends upon how many layers you want to put in front of yourself when you go out. Or do you want to remove that layers, open the robe, and be naked in front of somebody? You know, menti mentally, physically, emotionally, in the whole aspect. Do you let go of the robe from time to time? Or there's always a layer, somewhere or the other? You know, um, what do you call layers? I call it like a mm -hmm. different mask. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. We have, we as a human being have a mask for everyone and for, and for every situation. Mm. You know, uh, the way I, for example, the way I'm presenting myself to you right now in your studio would be completely different uh, from the way I'm, I present myself in my cozy sitting room sure. and 
I don't know, facing my beloved or my dog or, you know, yeah. whatever. And uh, so every situation and interaction had demands a different mask out of us, you know. Mm -hmm. That is how the society is operating. And it's not in vain that Shakespeare said, said that the world is a stage and we're all actors. Always. Know? I know? Yeah. Oh. So um, that is inevitable. But if you ask me personally, I have... Um, I, I mean, a lot of people say this uh, as well, but you know, I, 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 I really truly uh, tried, and I think I have succeeded to a certain extent, uh, you know, up to this point, by living my life on my own terms, mm -hmm. uh, by uh, going by by what I care rather than what other people expect of me or care. And I'm, and I consider myself extremely lucky that I've been able to do that, yeah. because there are a lot of people, you know, because of the profession, because of the so social space they're put in, that even if they want to, even if they think that is the right way to do it, they can't. They're compelled to put on a mask, yeah. and that can be extremely frustrating. Oh, it, it extremely. Can. So I have been lucky to have you know, a reasonably successful life by living on my own terms, by living on my own expectations, mm -hmm. by creating my own bar, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but this is not something that I can, I can Tell other people you should also do this because even if you want to, it is not possible sometimes, many a times. Mm -hmm. Just because of the social setup that we're in, your profession will demand certain kind of masking. And within your profession, the way you interact with different individuals within your profession will demand a different mask out of you. Out of you. you know you're doing that you probably deep inside may also know that this is not what I want to do, mm -hmm. but you can't. That's how li life has been 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 run, mm -hmm. and you have succumbed to it. You're in the game, so that is frustrating. You know, when people ask me, especially about my profession and my life, you know, you have become a successful actor, you know, whatever you... A superstar. Yeah, superstar, yeah. Mahanayak, you yeah. pursued this and, you know, you reached yeah. this. All that is all right, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I appreciate all that. But what I really, really consider the greatest achievement is that... Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. You're welcome. I, uh, I've been able to live uh, the life uh, and do my profession the way I wanted to, mm -hmm. you know, truly the way that I want to. It doesn't mean that I'm not, be, I, 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 I wouldn't be cooperative. Of course I would be cooperative, you know. Yeah. Cooperation is always required, yeah. but that's different from putting up a mask. I was cooperative, I was understanding, I respected other people's feelings, I, res I value other people's opinion, even if it's different from my own. Mm -hmm. I can see that. I am not very, I have my way, but my, but I'm also aware that my way doesn't have to be everybody's way. Yeah. You know, I'm perfectly all right with that. But that doesn't also mean that I got to be on other people's way. Hmm. I'm all right by being on my own way, but I can also understand that a lot of people around me will not see it in, the, in, in the same light. Mm -hmm. They will see it in a different light, and that's okay by me. It's perfectly all right. That's how we are made. Right from the get-go, right from the beginning? Right that's from the beginning, mm -hmm. right from the get-go, you know. I mean, uh, and, and that's in every aspect, whether it be the professional colleagues, mm -hmm. whether it be relationship, yeah. you know, 
if I like someone, if I see someone in a certain way, and if the other party doesn't like or doesn't see me in that way, I, I, I got to have a perfect understanding that, okay, wrong number. <laughs> Let me go and knock some other door. And I also, and, and, and in that case, I also expect the other person to understand mm. that I may not have the same feeling that the other person has. How does it feel to be rejected? Oh, rejections are, oh, not just professionally, in, in every aspect, emotionally too. Being rejected is... This is what I exactly meant. Thing. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like if you can respect other people's view yeah. and deep down understand that mm -hmm. people will have different outlook, mm -hmm. different opinion, different taste, different views, you know, Rejection is just a one person's view and one person's opinion. It hurts. There are seven billion people mm -hmm. in the world, you know, and mm -hmm. half of them are men and half of them are women. Mm -hmm. So let's just, since we're both men, let's mm -hmm. just say in this case a woman, right? If, so, uh, if a woman has rejected you, she is one in what, like three and a half billion people, girl, women? 101 men in the world <laughs> and 100 women in the world. <laughs> so she has our opinion, you know. Yeah, Maybe yeah. she doesn't like um, men who wears black shirt or t-shirt or wears a sh sh glasses of this color. Or, or who likes younger men and not older men. <laughs> yeah, who likes <laughs> young men and not older men, you know. Uh, and, and that's perfectly all right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this is what I meant. And act you're saying rejection hurt. I'm saying rejection is an opinion. Experience that. Yeah. Oh, there's another view, which is a different view from mine. <laughs> Great. <laughs> you know the funniest thing I've funniest story. The one of the experiences. I don't know why I want to share this with you. Streets of New York. You know. Yeah. Streets of New York. You've been to New York. You, uh, you, you know what exactly I'm talking about. Streets of New York filled with the rest of the world. At Times Square, at one time of the world, at one point, there are always people from every aspect of life. Uh, every con people from every continent are there. I was walking down on the streets of New York on a sunny afternoon. For some reason. I can't remember where, but somewhere in Manhattan. I just, I was just tired. I walked the whole day. I was looking at this, looking at that. For se first time in New York, I was so excited. Wanted to see everything. I just sat down. Wanted to see everything. I wanted everything. to see everything. A lot everything. of things. A lot of things. <laughs> a lot of things. <laughs> don't, say, don't say everything in New York because <laughs> New York has lots of things to offer. <laughs> oh. I know exactly what you mean. Uh, I sat down, you know, on the street. I just sat down on the street. And then I'm just tired. I just sat down. Looked okay, you know, okay. I, had, I think I had a t-shirt on. I was just there. I had a backpack. I had a cup of coffee. I'll never forget it. I had a cup of coffee like this. The lid was out. I had a cup of coffee. I just sat down for like, it was like maybe 20 seconds I was there. Guess what happened? What happened? I got a dollar and a cup of coffee. <laughs> okay. Somebody gave me a dollar. So Somebody just threw in a dollar in here. So you probably thought you were homeless or... Yeah. I was like, wow. I was like, wow. I still have that dollar in my house. But why did you think you were homeless? Did you... Was it no, I just sat down. I was just tired. I know. Oh, you I, sat... You literally I, I literally sat on the sat floor? On the floor. Oh. I literally sat on the floor of the no. street. I was so tired. I just... Oh, not street. on the bench or anything. No, not on the bench oh, okay, or anything. Okay. I was just tired. I just, I, I, I just sat down. Oh, yeah, and yeah. then somebody yeah. threw in a dollar. Yeah. And then I was like, wow. You're lucky because a lot of people... Uh, I mean, just pass by a genuinely, yeah. you know, genuine homeless person and not even <laughs> giving them a dollar, a dollar a day. Right but you were lucky. So. I'm lucky. So you'll probably make a good career <laughs> out of being a homeless person in New York. Definitely, definitely <laughs> would. And then I thought to myself, wow, I got to experience that. Life is full of experiences. It's full of experiences. Hell. You... All of us have experiences. If you want to ever look back, it doesn't matter what experience is it. Which one would you pick right now at this moment? You know, um, before I answer your question mm -hmm. to the T, exactly, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Let me just hit around the bush a little. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. You know, in life, I never um, wanted to keep myself uh, in a box. We generally intend, you know, most societies and people of different backgrounds like to keep themselves in a box. Like, mm -hmm. if you are of a certain profession, then you are sort of like uh, only uh, going around with this kind of people or that kind of people or you're interacting with this people or that people and you're not going beyond that because that is uh, either beneath you or something that you don't consider up to your Mm -hmm. Mark or your par, you know. Yeah. So people intend to do that in whichever s station of life they might be, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you are a great businessman or great generals or a great movie star or great media person, you intend to say, oh, this is my circle, this is where I should be seen, and this is the people that I should be interacting with, and these are the kind things that I should be owning or wearing or doing, and, yeah. you know, and, and you just keep yourself within that. So this is what I meant by saying I didn't like keeping myself in a box, you know, yeah. because as a life, I mean, you are everybody, uh, all of us either get there or are born to a certain background, to a certain station in life. That's inevit inevitable, right? But my way of living was going beyond that and experiencing life as a whole, you know, yeah. getting out of my comfort zone, um, learning, observing, interacting with people that I really don't need to otherwise, hmm. you know. Uh, for me, by doing that, I'm actually living. Yeah. I'm making the best out of my life. I am going out there consciously exploring everything that life has to offer me. And life has good, bad, and ugly things to offer you. Yeah. And you can learn from all these good, bad, and ugly things and be and enrich yourself and be an experienced person, you know? Just because you are a good person and if you just hang out with only good person, you're not going to experience the ugly and the bad side of this life. When I mean by ugly and bad side, I mean of different types of yeah. lives, you know? Yeah. I don't literally mean ugly and mm -hmm. bad, but different versions, you know? Like, um, and everybody is, is, everybody has their, has their experience and their narration yeah. on life. I go to the extent of saying that everybody carries a literature of their own life. Everybody carries a poem of their own life, mm -hmm. whether it be a person who is asking a, a dollar in the street of New York or the guy who lives in Trump Tower. Mm -hmm. You know? They all have stories. And, those, and all those stories are worth listening to. It's not just this are the stories that is worth listening and these are not worth paying attention mm -hmm. to. If you really want to experience life to the fullest and you are here just for a certain uh, definite period, you know, you don't have infinite time here. So why do you want to waste this finite time that you have in this earth by just associating with certain experiences and discarding the rest of the other experiences that the world and the life has to mm -hmm. offer. You know? It's like uh, going to a movie and just enjoying a few scenes and ignoring the other th scenes. Yeah. That means you, you haven't watched the full movie. Yeah. So life is like a movie. You want to experience every scene, every nook and corners, every people's as much as possible, you know? Mm -hmm. Like they say, you know, Go out into the world, explore, travel, meet people of other cultures, other views. Because if you are just concentrating on your view, on things, you know, there are a lot of people who are living in a very 
so-called, you know, very developed nations mm -hmm. with and hanging out with only sophisticated people, and they probably think uh, this is how the whole world should be, and this is the only way of life. But that is so wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, you go out in the world, and then you realize that oh, other people have different ways of doing the, exactly the same thing that you are doing. What you are calling fun is a different way of experiencing fun for other people. Yeah. The way you thought was good food, there was a you know, completely different types of food was considered excellent yeah. for the other True. person. What you thought was a great pastime is a completely different, you know? The way you pray, the way you go, the way you interact, is so many varieties. So be open to all that, you know? Don't restrict yourself by saying, oh, I'm only this, therefore I only need to be associated with people who are like-minded or who are mm -hmm. in my comfort zone. Yes, Ron, you're not experienced. So I'm like that. I'm, I'm very open. I, uh, therefore, I can take, uh, if it is, you know, I, like you said, you know, we, we talked something about a yeah. joke, you have sense Already. of humor or something like yeah, that, yeah. and I said that yeah. I am a person who can laugh on myself. True. Exactly. So that's how I am. If you crack a joke on myself, I'm not going to be hurt. Even if it's a horrible joke on me. <laughs> You'd still be fine. I see it objectively. I see it as a joke. Mm -hmm. You know? So I go out there and I meet people of different opinions, different mm -hmm. reactions, people who like me, people who don't like me, you know? I mean... I haven't traveled as extensively as I would like to, but I think I have traveled quite a bit. Quite a lot. Yeah. And I've been to all kinds of cultures. I mean, I, my father was a diplomat, so yeah. I grew up in a, you know... A traveling family. A diplomatic yeah. life. You know, father was stationed from one country to the other, and so I'm always, like, you know, stationed in one culture, then picked up and thrown into a Another completely one. different yeah. culture, <laughs> and I got to readjust myself. And that has been part of my upbringing, you know. Mm -hmm. So I feel very comfortable moving out of uh, different cultures, you know, and different um, uh, people and different nationalities. Maybe that's one of the reasons why the attachment is not there sometimes. Yeah, you know... Th that's, that's heavy? Uh, uh, no, you're actually quite right. What happens is, you know, as a, when you spend a childhood like that, like mm -hmm. uh, stationed in different places... Uh, keep on moving, keep on you moving. You keep on moving. What happens is you're very... Uh, easy with changes yeah you can get in and accept the change much quicker than other people and adjust to different cultures and different nationalities you soak different it in super points. fast yeah but the bad side of that is that uh, you don't have a definite root anywhere you're not rooted anywhere hmm. so you di you really don't know where you are rooted i mean there was a time in my life when my when i was uh, you know like hopping from my father's one posting to the other in different countries, like it used to be four years there and two, three years in the country, and then again four years in another country, mm. another culture. Then I go to another school and another set of rules and you know yeah. another system. And I was kind of used to it. Uh, so I was used to hopping, but if you put me somewhere, I didn't know whether I belonged there. Like, mm. you know, yeah. I did not have sense of belonging anywhere, but I felt, again, at the same time, I felt very comfortable everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the best thing. <laughs> that's the best thing. So that's the reason why you are who you are yeah, at the moment. But the, the, the bad side is that, where do I belong? Yeah. Where's home? Oh. I know. What, who, who am I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not all these other cultures that I'm intermingling with. Mm. I definitely probably have my own identity as well. But w what exactly is that? Especially when I'm growing up. I mean, later on, of course, I figured that out. And was I, didn't, it? I didn't have a problem at all. Oh, with that. Was it one of the reasons why you came back and you wanted to create identity? Like, like, all right, I'm going to do this. For example, cinema, right? You jumped into cinema. And then you were like, all right, I'm going to embed myself. I'm going to make sure that I leave a legacy here. And you worked hard and you gave, you gave it your all. You still do. Was that one of the reasons why maybe when you look back? You know, when you uh, mm -hmm. take a fir first step, let's just say, when you take a first step to mm -hmm. your passion, yeah. you never think of uh, ah. the the end of it. You, know, you never think that I'm going to ultimately be this. You know, I'm going to leave this legacy or I'm going to... Uh, 
achieve this. It's just like the Sanskrit saying, you know, like, karma garne phal ko asa na garne. You know, that's how your first step should be started. You just should be happy to make things work on a day-to-day -day basis and the future will take care of itself. But if you constantly st start thinking about the ultimate destination when you are just about, you know, you're taking your mm -hmm. initial steps, then it can hinder your day-to-day -day progress if you're constantly thinking about the pull. When is the pull going to come, <laughs> you know? And not thinking about nurturing the tree, you know, mm -hmm. enjoying it grow. And just feeling happy that, oh, it's become better than yesterday. It has become taller. There are more branches. You know, it's like that. Sadness only comes when each day passes and your tree is not growing. It's drying out. Then that's a problem. But as long as your tree is alive and uh, the branches are coming out and the leaves are coming out, the fruit will be there. You know, yeah. So uh, that's how I, that's how uh, I took my first uh, step here. I did not think about uh, that I'm going to live a legacy or I'm going to do this. I just wanted it to work for me. I did not think about the nation. I did not think about hmm. the great contribution that I will be making to the society. Yeah. I was not thinking that oh, I'm going to do this for my country. That, of course, comes later as you are able to succeed, you know. The first important thing, like, this is what I tell young people when I, you know, when I interact with them as well, is that don't be too idealistic, you know. Mm -hmm. Don't say that I'm going to do this because I'm going to make my nation proud. I'm going to make uh, the societies proud. I'm going to... You know, change yeah. the country, change the... Don't. Just try to make it work for yourself. Yeah. Just try to succeed individually. And if you are... If you manage to reach the pinnacle of your success, that itself will be a contribution to your nation. That itself will be a contribution to your society. There is no way, no matter what kind of field that you choose, if you are actually managed to reach the pinnacle mm -hmm. of success in whatever field, whether it be farming or media or politics or business or anything. Mm -hmm. Initial phase, you're always trying to make it successful for yourself. You're just concentrating. I want to make it work for myself so I can feed my family, I can look after myself. But if you become the greatest media person of this nation, see, this nation... There you go, automatically it's already automatically there. Automatically it's there. Yeah. And your success is going to be shared by the nation, it's going to be shared by the society you live in. And you will also feel responsibility at that point, you know. But that only happens after you have personally proven yourself, achieved and gained. Because society otherwise, mm -hmm. they don't give you, they don't serve you anything on a, on a platter. You know, society is, will only acknowledge you after you have proven yourself. Mm -hmm. And that proving you have to do it solo, on your own capacity. Yeah. You know, but I, ironically, once you have reached the pinnacle of success and, you know, whatever achievement, then the society would want the share of the pie and you are also feel responsible for giving it back to the society that you are in. You know, mm -hmm. That's why you hear you know, all these great business houses or people who have excelled, achieved a lot, you know, whether it be in cinema or media, after reaching the pinnacle, they said, okay, now is the time to give back mm -hmm. something. You know? yeah. But like when I started off, and if I, and, and before I have proven myself, if I went out claiming that, you know, it's just that I haven't had the opportunity, but I'm really a great actor. <laughs> 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 I can really act well because 
because my mirror tells me so. I've seen it, you know, mm -hmm. every morning in my bathroom, and uh, what I see in the mirror is so perfect, you know. It's like the greatest artist. They will just laugh, like you laugh right now. Yeah. This is, this is a natural reaction. Because we know people who yeah. are still there right yeah. now. Yeah. They will re re react like that, you know. They'll never take you seriously. So in order for them to take you seriously, you yourself will have to get into the arena. Yeah. Like one great president of America said that you have to get into the arena and you have to give your sweat, blood and tears. Everything. You gotta be your own gladiator. You gotta be a gladiator. You it's it's your sweat, blood and tears and take the mud, take the dirt and move ahead to better yourself, to get to your goal, to get to your destination. And that you'll have to do it solo on your own capacity with only you know with the only thing in your toolbox would be your confidence your energy mm -hmm. your attitude yeah you know the way you have channelized your emotions yeah <laughs> true 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 you know how you have dealt with your emotions all these things comes comes in you know mm -hmm. all this comes in 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 in, in the path of, of of life how you have dealt with all these aspects and actually all this whatever we've talked about yeah. you know it's how you've dealt with your confidence how you've dealt with the energy that you have what state of mentality you have you know and how you have channelized your moods Mm -hmm. Whether it be love, whether it be with a society, whether it be with a family, whether the way people have uh, treated you, dealt with you, how have you reacted on that? It's not how you have acted, how you have reacted. Mm -hmm. How you have reacted when people threw m mud on your face. It's all about how you have reacted in a situation like that. How have you reacted when on the course of your journey to success, if you have failed or you have faced with setbacks or you have fallen, mm -hmm. how people around you have made fun of you, you know? Um, You're trying to remember all the things that happened to you as well at the moment? This is life, yeah. I mean, yeah. this is life. Yeah. To put you down yeah. and how you react to those things. How have you reacted? Counts a lot. How have you reacted to all kind of, you know, if there is more than one, then a few love affairs, emotional attachment, how people have disrespected you or how people have respected you, how people have demoralized you or how people have boosted you, the people who have strengthened you or people who have tried to tear you down, put you down. In all this situation, how you have reacted. Mm -hmm. So it's more about how you have reacted to this all kinds of situation, challenging or not challenging situation you have reacted. Makes all the difference on uh, how you go, how you're moving along on your path and where you're reaching. There is a thing by um, this actor called Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, all right, all right. That guy. <laughs> 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 he said. Uh, he always looks at himself 10 years from now. He always wants, he always envisions himself 10 years from now. 10 years from now, I'm going to be that. And then he keeps striving towards that. And then fr once he gets there, it's going to be 10 years from that again. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. When you... you see, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, continue. Well, no, when you look back, like you said earlier, you know, you kept on moving from one point to the other, one point to the other. You kept on moving. You kept on moving so many different places, right? When you came back, the sense of home was missing. That's what you said. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget that. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. something that I go through as well. At, at one age, yeah, but uh, I got over that. After you got over that. Yeah. When you came back, you know, all right, here we go. Did you start it living by yourself? Or, you know, because there's a huge difference of... Uh, living standards here as well when it comes to the Western world as well. Did you live by yourself when you came back? Or was there peer pressure or society pressure or like a lot of things? Because from all the conversations that we've had, you've always been somewhat of on your own path. Oh, yeah. Did you live by yourself or how did it work? 
Uh, if you don't mind me. What asking. do you mean live by yourself? I, like, I, like, like, I was like living with my family. You're living with the yeah, family, I, but I, I was with yeah. I, I was living with mm-hmm. a family, but yeah. Even at that age, you know, when I um, the time I actually completely stopped traveling, traveling, and 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 just living in Nepal. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't mean the traveling and yeah. the vacations that I take in between. Yeah. I mean, that's a different thing. Yeah. But uh, I, that way I travel quite a bit. Yeah, and, yeah we know. <laughs> even these days, you know, all that. But I really, like, rooted myself. Mm-hmm. And Nepal was only after I got into films. Uh. Rooted myself. And uh, that, too, when my parents were, at that moment, I think they were in New Delhi. Mm. So, so I was... You know, living there, and then I came here, and then I started doing films. And after my film career took off, then I was completely rooted here. Uh, and then the sense of, <laughs> as my film was accepted, you know, and as I started catering to the general mass of Nepal and mm-hmm. connecting with them and identifying with them, then I was. It was the other way around. It, it felt like that. This is where I, my roots are. This is where I've been rooted all the time. Yeah. And I felt extremely proud of that. The connection that I had with the general Nepali people living across this country, you know, from east to west to mm-hmm. Himalayas to Tarai and all these people, and I so closely connected with them. They identified with my character. And I, like, was deeply connected with them. I was connected with their emotions, with their this, and what they valued and what they accepted meant a lot for me. Yeah. Uh, made a lot of uh, difference and importance uh, for me. Uh, so that way I got so rooted in my own culture and mm-hmm. my own country and and I got to th- thank Nepali films for that. And um, the kind of characters that I did, which was identifiable by the general mass of this country, you know. Mm-hmm. I did a character that was identifiable by the general people, especially the youth of that time. You know, I did films like Bhariya, Ek Nambar Ko Paakhe, Bahadur, you know, Allare, mm-hmm. Awara, just representing the underdogs of this country. Yeah. You know, and so I couldn't. So my my film sort of like connected me to the nook and corners of this country, and what I had missed out initially in my growing up days yeah. made it up like hundred folds, and now I feel so culturally rooted. I feel so connected with uh, my fellow Nepalis, mm-hmm. and when I meant by mean by fellow Nepalis, I mean the Nepalis who represent the culture, the language, the ways of this life. I feel so grateful that through my art, they welcomed me in their heart and they considered me as one of them. So now. I mean, you are a public figure. I don't know how your fans react to you, but with me, it's more like uh, a family member. It's mm-hmm. not like a fan and actor adulation, even. Yeah. It's like, oh, he's one of us. You know, wherever I go, the instant connection, the bonding, you know, I love it. And this is like from Himal to Tarai to East to West and... Right now, I, I, I love being in, in, in the mountains of Nepal, you know. And uh, I, I really, uh, it's, it's, my, my art uh, has opened all that avenues for me. And uh, now I value uh, uh, the way of uh, life uh, that this nation's diverse culture has to offer. Mm. I um, love uh, not the the modernized one, but the real 
organic traditional ones. I love those foods. Yeah. You know, not the modernized version, not the synthetic version or uh, hybrid version. But Palpa go Tsugoni also mit heute. Ah, Tsugoni, Hello, ja, Ka, Sisno, you know. Yeah. Jumla Kuki, Dal. Merci Chamel. Merci Chamel, you know, all this, you know. And, and they are the best food in the world for me right now, you know. No doubt. And if I get. Uh, And there are so many aspects of uh, the way of life and the culture this nation of, uh, offers is so unique and so great, you know. And um, so th all this, uh, uh, I, I, I got th through my art. So I, hmm. besides, uh, you know, being able, being in a position to make film and, and follow my yeah. passion, you know, through cinema, And these are all the byproducts that I got, <laughs> you know. <laughs> the thing is, a lot of young people watch uh, the podcast. A lot of them want to follow their passion. How did your parents take it when you wanted to jump into cinema? Like, how was it, truly? What did dad say? What did mom say? You know, my, my experience tells mm -hmm. me that your, your parents mm -hmm. or your guardians, they always want best for you. True. You know, best for you. And they think... Uh, And what's uh, what they consider best is something that is um, secured, something that provides you for your rest of your life. They want to see their children or the people they are taking care of to be on a safe path in life. Yeah. You know, something that guarantees them a certain position in society, certain success, certain wealth, you know, yeah. something that guarantees them, you know. Mm -hmm. So they always would want you to pick uh, the path that has already been proven, mm. unlike the untreaded, <laughs> untreaded path, you know. Uh, so they just, yeah, I mean, they're all right. They're not, they, they won't tell you just to follow this path. They tell you to follow all the safe paths, whichever path, mm, you know, yeah. like. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, you know, <laughs> be, a, be a pilot, be a general, or be a businessman, or be a lawyer, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> be a doctor, yeah. or be an engineer, you know. Uh, this we know. I mean, <laughs> if you are successful in this, this will get you this, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, it's clear. It's clear. Uh, this one is opaque. <laughs> this one is opaque, yeah. This one is very, very non-transparent, you know, like. Uh, and then not only this, I mean, those days it was uh, this field or media field or sports field or music field, you know. Those are something people did uh, as a hobby. You wouldn't want to do that as a career. Full time. Full time, especially in this country, uh, let's just say. Uh, at least, you know, 25, 30, 35 years ago, it was... Nothing. I mean, like, your, your child is playing a football, it's well and good. Mm. You know, people are saying, oh, what a great footballer he is. And then you're happy. Okay, you are a good footballer, it's well and nice. But do your studies, become a lawyer, become an engineer, become a doctor, you know. Mm. This is what you're pursuing. This is all right. You know, you've won medals, good. You've represented your school, good. You're playing the club, yeah. good. But this is not what you're going to do for your rest of your life. This is not what <laughs> going to put food on the table or... <laughs> get you a, I don't know what, a, yeah. a good life. So all these was, were feel that was untreaded in our country those days, you know, like, and getting into cinema was, what is he doing? I mean, what is he doing? I mean, this is just, uh, just 30 years ago when I came in, 30, 31 years ago yeah. when I came in, up to that point we had hardly made about one dozen film maybe, you know, because The first film we started making way, way back, yeah. actually. Yeah. The first film was made maybe about 70 years ago. Okay. But we made our first film 70 years ago, but we were not consistent, you know. Uh, and then we started making, we were making only very sporadically, you know, like maybe yeah. 70 years ago, first film, maybe you know, another 10 years down the line, mm. second film, you know, f five years down the line, third film. Yeah. So by the time I came into the scene, in we, the had, 90s, yeah. we made maybe about, what, a dozen of film. Yeah. And that one dozen film, I ended up acting in the second era of being <laughs> in the film, you know, in just one year, <laughs> myself, and, yeah. and there were other people who were also making films. Yeah. So that was the scenario 35 years ago of, of Nepali movie field, you know. So, of course, naturally, your parents who want uh, the best for you, you know, they yeah. want you to have a secure ca career, a long-lasting career, and you're telling them, I want to pursue 
my passion and uh, become an actor in this country. Yeah. So you want to be an actor in Nepal? But they're not making any films. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Give it a shot in Mumbai, maybe, you know? Maybe right, that yeah. would be something different, yeah, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, so, uh, so everybody's parents are like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, but the table has turned around a bit now because now even in acting field or sports field or even music field, mm. now people are seeing examples. Yeah. People are seeing uh, role models. True. Oh, they have achieved this. They have done this. You can do this. And if you get to this, you can reach success. You will have this position in life. Look at this guy in music or look at this guy in cinema. So now I, what I see, and which I actually appreciate a lot and, and feel proud of it as well, is that now I see the newer generation who wants to get into the field of music or media or sports or cinema, parents actually feel proud of it. And they encourage that and they support. And they actually they they have this sense of pride by yeah. saying, oh, my son or daughter is a great musician or a great uh, singer uh, won this prize or you know like uh, or my um, daughter is uh, her first film did extremely <laughs> well and she's become uh, a heroine or an actress in, in you know yeah. uh, in, in, in film you know and they support that uh, so your parents it's it's not when they discourage you to follow your passion, it's only because they think that maybe that is not something that will secure you for the rest mm -hmm. of your life. Uh, that is the only uh, reason why maybe I think your, your at least in my case, yeah. your parents or your guardian would discourage you uh, in spite of the passion that you have. Uh, but what uh, a piece of advice, I mean, I can't give advice, but my, my, Why, not? Saying, Why not? Why huh? would you say that? Why would you say that you can't give advice? There's no such thing as advice, advice? you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because ultimately, every person, mm -hmm. you got to respect every person's uh, intellect and decision power. And the ultimate decision power has to come from the person itself. Advice is, advice is come for free. That's how, this is how I take it. Advice is come for free. It depends upon you want to take it I, or not. Mm -hmm. What do you call advice? I call it like sharing my experience. Experience, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm going to share my experience. So if you uh, and if you want to take something out of yeah. it, if you want to learn it, you know, from it, mm -hmm. and take it as a guidelines, and then ultimately make your own decision. Yeah, that's well and good, you know. Yeah. Uh, but my experience is not the ultimate experience. You know, you can you can take it or discard it. Uh, it's, it's 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 entirely up to you. Um, you, you, yeah. you 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 should be the master of your own. Soul, <laughs> captain of your own fate. Ship. <laughs> <laughs> the whole the whole country wants to know this. Uh, you know, I'm not going to ask you this, but uh, I'm just going to say this. How are you going to be as a father? Uh, I love children. Yeah, I'm very good with children. I can instantly bond with children of any age. I wouldn't say any age. I'm not too good with someone who are really, really tiny. Oh, I can't carry them. I'm too scared. Yeah, if it's too <laughs> tiny, I uh, think it's mm. too fragile and I might, you know, yeah, do something, something yeah, wrong yeah, 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 or something yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. But once they Same. get to the walking stage or this and that, I can really bond well with, with, with children. So, and I can communicate with children quite well as well. So that way I think uh, uh, I'm very good with children, but... Uh, be a great dad. Fatherhood and, and dad is something, um, if you want me to be honest, uh, yeah. it's just not me. It's actually a mother and I both. It's, yeah. it's, our, it's a mutual uh, agreement or mutual discussion and the conclusion that we have reached, at least to this point, yeah. is that um, we're not planning for... Uh, uh, fatherhood or motherhood uh, or parenthood at this point. Yeah. Uh, so the reason why we don't have children after like almost five plus years of getting married is out of choice. Yeah. Consciously. Conscious decision. 
and again, this is us, which is can be very weird for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, getting married and thinking in this line that we are thinking uh, may seem unnatural or weird or <laughs> is he gone out of his head or you know mm. uh, kind of thing but uh, that's how we have decided uh, up to this point at least yeah. uh, you don't know what the future holds so yeah we don't know um, I'm young and Madhu is much younger <laughs> 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 I like the way you put it. I like. I love. The, I love the way you put it. I love the way you put it. You'd be a great dad. You'd be a great dad. No, I will be. Yeah. Sitting down, talking to you, listening to you. Oh yeah. I uh, I bond well with children, and I um, I communicate uh, well, and uh, I can uh, engage them. Mm -hmm. That's important. I can engage them. Um, I don't force myself upon them. Uh, yeah. I let it happen, everything naturally. Uh, so I'm good with children. Uh, mm, and keeping this nature in mind, mm -hmm. uh, I actually should have been very impatient to be a, uh, be a father, but unfortunately I'm not. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all... Uh, that's because the way the, the life is, yeah. at least I think, dictating me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm going by that. Uh, yeah. In, in some ways, it can also be like a little uh, selfish in a way. You know, some people might think in, in those terms, at least to this point, because uh, uh, being a father is also like. Uh, Contributing your time, energy, and everything for another person, yeah. and um, living, and also living for another person, you know, and prioritizing another person, because that's what father and mother do yeah. when they have children, you know. It's no longer you. Yeah, it's it's all about them, and yeah. they are in the pr priority. So not having them. Well, the reason why I'm saying being selfish is that not having them means that you want all the spotlight on yourself <laughs> and just want to concentrate on your ways of life and your thinking. But at this point of time, um, in a way, I, I wouldn't say there's no truth in that yeah. because uh, I'm young, but I'm not very, very young. Um, and uh, we all have a finite time here. Mm -hmm. So whatever days, months, or years that's left in my visa to be in this universe, at this point I uh, want to concentrate on, on, on understanding life, myself, my spirit, uh, just m be focused and concentrate more on that. And if I have another responsibility, I, I could be totally distracted from that. And, 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 and my priority might have to be on some other things. And yeah. I would miss out on all those things. It would have been all right uh, if I had reached this point and got married when I was a <laughs> when I was an infant. <laughs> 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 then at this point, my children would have been all grown up all and grown gone. Up, yeah. uh, but considering the time remaining that I have, um, yeah, like, that's why I said it can be selfish. I want to devote more time on just uh, understanding life uh, and not being distracted by yeah. something else. Bowser is okay with that as well. Yeah. It's a mutual discussion yeah. so far. Is okay. Uh, that's why I said it's not. It's not just my decision. Yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, things can turn around uh, quickly if one of us decides the other way. You know, yeah. uh, because I can't f force my view upon her. Like if it's only if she um, 
it's okay with this, we can go on, but moment she's not, then we might have to think of something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be cool. That'd be, uh, hey, that's going to be great, you know, yeah. when, you, when you think about it. You said, uh, you talked about something, I just want to dive into this, and uh, most probably we're going to wrap up in a while as well. I know your time is, well, all our yeah. times are limited I in know, this world. <laughs> it is, it is, it is. What, according to Rajesh Samal, what do you think happens when we die? What do you think that happens when we move out of here and move into some other I'm not going to get into this because I have my own theories. What do you think is going to happen? You know, there's a... In, in, in cases like this or in issues like this, you know, I'm always caught in a dichotomy. You know, I'm always yeah. like ambivalent. I, it's so difficult to give you a, a one answer because like I said, you know, there's something that is rooted in my emotion and yeah. there's something else that my intellect tells me mm -hmm. and the practical side tells me you know and a lot of people are caught in in between their emotions which is connected with their faith and belief mm -hmm. and the practical aspects the knowledge that they've gathered the experience that they know the reality that they have found out or yeah. discovered or <laughs> or what their intellect is telling them so I'm like that too, you know, like, uh, you know, I'll, it's very soothing to believe in karma and believe in reincarnation and believing in what I do in this life would pay it be, you know, would be paid back in my next life. So mm -hmm. I should tread very consciously, wisely, honestly, nicely in this life. So my next life becomes very fruitful and all that. All that is wonderful, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice being connected. But my intellect tells me that we're gone, we're gone. Yeah. We're gone. Life has no meaning. Life has absolutely no meaning, you know. Like in Macbeth, Macbeth there's, a, the, 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 there's a line in between, you know, there's tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace. And in the middle they say... That um, you know, life is but a walking shadow. Always, poor player. You know, life is a walking shadow. Poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage, and then is heard no more. It's a tale mm -hmm. told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. This is exactly what it is, you know, during our productive time when we have energy, when we are on this pathway of being very productive and, you know, all our dreams and uh, our goals are coming true, we are strutting and fretting on the stage. Yeah. We all have that phase, that period, where we are on the center stage, the spotlight is on us, we're energized, and we're strutting and fretting on the stage, but ultimately what happens? And then you have to get out of the stage one time or the other, sooner or later. Yeah. Your act is going to get over. And then you're heard no more. And then what happens? You become a tale. You know, once upon a time, there was this actor called Rajesh Hamal. And boy, they used to make so many jokes out of him. <laughs> and he was larger than life. And, you know, they used to say that to... To have his noodle, he used to get Sankar's uh, Trishul yeah. and all this. You know this? But when I'm gone, I'm gone. All these tales, people will be talking about my achievements and or your achievements or other people's achievements with all kind of sound and fury. But once we are gone, we're gone. It means nothing for us. But those tales will go on probably, you know? So that is life. Life actually does not have any meaning, you know. Therefore, each one of us has to give our own meaning to life, you know. We have to find our own space, own meaning, own path. True. Because unlike, it's, it's not a formula, it's not a, like, you put two plus two, then you'll get four. Yeah. There's no such thing for life. You know what's going to happen? I know what's going to happen. I'm going to see this right at the end. What's going to happen? You're going to be a star up on the sky. 
well, the science and the scientists will tell you that stars are made of completely <laughs> different <laughs> elements. <laughs> oh, Rajesh, sir, this was yeah. this was this was the best podcast we've done in our in uh, in the history of uh, the beginning of the podcast really? uh, scene in the country. Did you enjoy it? I loved it. You know, I liked it because you know we were talking about so many other things besides just your profession or my oh, profession. No. Yeah. You know, did this you is enjoy? Good. It? You I, had fun? Yes, I think basically we're just what were we? I mean, we're just being humans, right? Here. That's it. We're just being humans. You That's know? it. We have our flaws. We have our positive points. We have our good points. There are some people who will love us. <laughs> there are some people who will hate us. <laughs> There's some people who will em- embrace us. There are some people who doesn't want we know who don't want to touch us. Yeah. And that's all fine. That's all that's great. All great. We're all humans, you know. Let's appreciate everyone's uh, opinion, views. Uh, that's why I can tolerate you because. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Rajesh. I, I love you, and uh, it's it's going to be a pleasure to have you back any day. Great. Thank you very uh, much. Pleasure, for your Sanjay. Time, sir. Pleasure, Sanjay. It was nice. Nice talking to you. Thank you very much, sir. Great. All right, everybody. See ya. This episode is brought to you by Pulsar.